Hey, how's it going folks? Making beef stew today. Got myself a lovely little flanks or uh, sorry, blade steak. 17 bucks, pretty cheap actually at the wholesaler. Or not the wholesaler, at the superstore. Same difference, I guess. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim some of the fat off of this thing. It's fairly big. This has a bone in it right up at the top here. I'm just gonna let my knife follow that around and cut it out. But I'm not gonna toss the bone, I'm actually gonna save that bone and I'm gonna stick it in the beef stew. Cause that'll, when it braises, it's gonna extract some really good flavor out of it. Once I figure out what I'm doing here. see over here I've got my secret blend of Uncle Claude's 11 herbs and spices or whatever. Ooh, might be time to sharpen my knife. It's a little on the dull side. All right here we go we got out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these into one and a half inch pieces for chunks of meat. And I've got a nice hot pot here. And I'm going to braise these off, or sorry, brown these off. Now at this point, you can take your steak and you can put it in a bag full of flour, seasoned flour, and you can coat it and brown it, and that way you don't have to thicken it later. But I like to just put it in the liquid and braise it as it is, because what it does is it gets all the flavor out of it when you cook it just in the liquid and not a thickened liquid it all the fat because the blade is a fatty chunk of meat all the fat's gonna float to the top and when I go to thicken my stuff all I gotta do is skim the fat off it so as we cut and we cut and leave the silver skin on if I was really picky, I would clean the silver skin off, but at this point, it's a blade steak. It is what it is. All right, almost there. Look, I'm probably sliding off the screen here with this thing. Ah, that's too fatty. We'll throw that one out. All right, where's the meat? All cut nice. I've got some olive oil here. Nice good, olive, little, nice good olive oil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my stinking hot pan. You can see it's smoking nice. I'm going to drop some pieces in there. What you don't want to do is crowd it. And by crowding, I mean throwing all this meat in there. All you would do is you would just cool off your pan and it wouldn't brown anything. It would start actually, the liquid would come out of it and would pretty much start to boil. That's about half an hour. I've got a screen like this. You can buy this at any Safeway or Sobeys or a kitchen store. And all it does is save the grease from spitting up when you're cooking it. So I'll brown this stuff off and we'll come back. And I made some chicken salad yesterday, or this morning, sorry, out of the leftover chicken. I'm going to have some salad grass for lunch. Yum. Okay, I just finished browning off the bone a little, just to give it some color. The meat is nice and brown. I'm still chewing my salad wrap. Pot is smoking. We'll put some more oil in it. Got some hot beef stock. Take my mirepoix right in. Leftover garlic from Trey's milk and pickles yesterday. Does that look like enough? Sure. Maybe a few more. No such thing as too much garlic. All right. We get that in there. We stir it around a little bit. We put in our herbs and spices. 
I didn't buy fresh stuff, so I'm using dried rosemary. I just go about a tablespoon. Dried thyme, same thing, about a tablespoon. Bay leaves, up to you. I like bay leaf. The dried one's nice. Um, a couple chunks, maybe, maybe two or three pieces uh, for the peppercorn. So you don't have peppercorns floating around and people biting on them. What I like to do is I get a tea ball. And the tea ball, in case you don't know, is for using loose leaf tea. And I just pour some peppercorns in there and what it'll do, it'll braise along with the meat. And it'll extract the flavor, but you won't be biting into a peppercorn later on once it's all cooked. Me personally, I don't mind pepper, so if I bite into a peppercorn, it's no, it's no big deal, but other people's kids. All right, so we got all that in there. We give it a stir, we'll crank up the heat, and we'll get it nice and hot. And when you put everything in the oven hot, it's good. So the vegetables are going to be hot, the chicken stock is hot, the meat. I'm going to bring it all up to a boil. Third of a cup, half a cup of red wine. Yummy. Give that a little stir in there with the herbs and the spices. Boiling nicely. Keep my beef stock right in there. Take my meat. Put that in there. Give it all a stir with the tongs. So this is nice right here. Everything's all covered is what you want. When you braise stuff, you have the stuff you're cooking, the meat, you have to cover it with the liquid. Because if you don't cover it with the liquid, half of it's going to be nice and juicy and tender, and the other half is going to be dried out pretty much. So here, we'll get a nice close-up of this as we bring it to a boil. Da -da 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 -da. My Le Creuset pot, that's how you pronounce it, Le Creuset. Wee oui, wee, oui, tabernacle, mon zee, all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah, we'll bring this up to a boil. I'll pop this into a 300 oven. And uh, we'll cook it. Two o'clock now, we'll cook it to about five. We'll check the meat. And we'll thicken it up then and we'll come back. All right, I'm going to thicken my stew. I took it out of the oven. It's been about two and a half hours, almost three got it to a nice rolling boil here so you can thicken it one of two ways you can use a roux mixture of oil and flour equal amounts slowly pour it until you get the desired thickness this other way is pretty cool I use a whisk and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a bunch of spoonful of flour and I'm gonna pour that in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to submerse it into the liquid and I'm going to whisk it through the whisk. And whisking it through the whisk will get rid of the lumps. And it will also thicken your liquid as you go. Away. If you just put straight flour into hot liquid like that, all the flour would do is clump up. And you'd have one big giant mess. You'd have a bunch of lumps basically. You could also use a slurry method of flour and milk. But if you're doing that, what you do is you thin out whatever liquid you already have. So if you've got turn that down a bit more. If you've got a liter of stuff and you mix flour and water or flour and milk or whatever, with cold milk, and you whisk it in there, then it's you're, you're diluting whatever flavor you have in there. So we'll go and we'll go and we'll go. 
And once I get it done to a nice thickness, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my bannock. I'll find a spoon here and give this lovely stuff a stir. It's got a nice consistency to it. I'm going to whisk it a little bit longer. I know it's a big whisk, but I'm willing to take it. Uh, Get a little bit more flour in there and then I'll pop it back in the oven and keep on cooking and once that's done I will make my bannock and I'll add some frozen corn and peas to it a little bit later to, to give it a little bit of bulk. I'm doing low carb lately so I don't have any potatoes but I am making the bannock. I might have a little piece of bannock but we'll let you know. Ooh, turn off my loud exhaust fan there. So I got my pan, I got some lard in it, it's hot. About a quarter cup of lard or so. Um, nice hot pan, non-stick pan. You can use whatever pan you want. It doesn't have to be non-stick. You can cook it over a fire. You can cook it on a barbecue. You can cook it on a Coleman stove if you want to. It's bannock. You can do whatever you want. So what I've done is I've flattened it into a nice little round. You can see that. There we go. Nice little round. Round dish. You know it doesn't have to be perfectly round. Who cares? It's your bannock. Do whatever you want with it. So I get it in the hot oil, and already you can see it's starting to come up around the edges and stuff like that. So we'll let it go. I'll let this brown. I'll come back again when I flip it, and then we'll keep on keeping right, We're back. My bannock is browning nice. I can see it along the edges starting to turn nice and brown. About five minutes or so. Uh, I'm going to flip my bannock now. For all you ladies out there who want to be a good woman and make your man some bannock, you can get yourself a nice big flipper like that and you can really flip your bannock around like crazy, huh? It's really good. So here we go. Find the right angle. Get underneath it. Find the right angle. Get underneath it. Just over like that. Look at that. Nice and golden brown, huh? Pop this in the oven for about 20-25 minutes. We pull it out, we're going to have some nice looking bannock, all right? See you in a bit. Bannock is done. It looks good. The stew is done. It looks good. I'm going to plate it up and I'll take another picture here shortly. Ooh la la. There we go, people. Some lovely looking beef stew. Some lovely looking steaming bannock. Grab myself a glass of water. And we'll sit down and eat. Ooh, thank you for this food, Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord. You bless us food, nourish our bodies, and bless us evening. I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you on the next one.